students, welcome to MOA's Mini Masters at Home program. For those who don't know me, my name is Ms. Jordan and I am the Youth Education Coordinator at MOA. In keeping with our traditional Mini Masters format, today we're going to start off with an art discussion, followed by story time, and end with an art project. In this first video, we will have both our art discussion and story time. Then on our website, wisconsinart.org, there will be a second video in which the art project will be. In addition, there will be a PDF file listing the supplies needed for that project. So let's start off with our art discussion. Today's theme is all about books. So the piece we will be looking at today will be from MOA's permanent collection, and I'm very excited to show it to you. Today we will be looking at, today we're going to be talking about Aaron Bowrod's piece, Untitled. It is also known as Pegasus and Book. Let's take a second and look at it. What do we see? What type of art do we think it is? Do we think it's a painting? Do we think it's a photograph? Do we think it's something else? This work is actually a print made from a lithograph. I know it's a big word, but a lithograph is basically when they would take a stone and be able to use both water and oil to create an image that they could recreate over and over and over again. So it was really great when they were making books and they needed to create the same image on multiple pages or in multiple books. So it basically allowed them to make copies of something. So we know that this is a print, which means that there's probably more than one copy of this piece. What else do we notice in this work? Do we notice the colors in it? What colors do you see? I see like a bluish green color. I see red and I see white. Am I missing anything? Does anyone know what a Pegasus is? Pegasus is basically a horse, but with wings. It is often talked about in fairy tales and stories. I love this piece because I love that the Pegasus is jumping over the book. It makes me want to think what kind of book it is. It reminds me of a fairy tale or a story that we don't know what's going on. We see things that look maybe like a boat in the distance. Maybe they're feathers. Maybe there's something else. I know when I look at this, I always have a lot of questions, but it makes me very happy because of the colors and because of all the lines we see. What do you think? How does this work make you feel? So today, since we're talking all about books, the story we are going to be reading is also about books and about reading. Then when we're done reading, we're gonna come back and look at this piece to see if we can make any connections. Today, we're going to be reading How to Teach a Slug to Read by Susan Pearson. How to Teach a Slug to Read by Susan Pearson, published by the Marshall Cavendish Children Corporation. For those who are curious about the copyright information, it can all be found on this page. I also want to point out that we are able to use this book through Amazon's free Kindle download program. In addition, all the Mini Masters at Home stories have all been on the free ebook list. So let's continue on to our story. When you teach a slug to read, you should 1. Start out by putting labels on his favorite things. Corn, bug, bean, carrot, and worm. 2. Next, find a really good book. This is very important or your slug will lose interest. The best books will have the best slugs in them. Laughing lizards. Ugh, lizards eat slugs. Hug a bug? No way. Mushy love stories? Yuck. The tale of two termites? Boring. Homework is fun. Get serious. Rhymes for mother slug? I want this one. Mother slug rhymes are good. They have lots of slugs in them. And the rhymes will help your slug remember the words. Three. Prop the book up close to the ground. I can't see. Four, find a rock for your slug to sit on so he can see the page better. Be patient. It will take your slug some time to climb up on the rock. Mary had a little slug. His skin was smooth as silk. She dressed him in a satin shirt and fed him bread and milk. I love it. Five. Show your slug the words that repeat a lot. This will help him spot them right away. Once a bug, 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 on a rug, 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 bug. Learn to fly, fly, fly. Say good, bye, bye, bye. Fly, fly, bug. Six, 
help your slug send out words. Whatever can the matter be, Sally Slug has climbed a tree. She'll come down at her best ten, and she'll climb back up again. Slug, slug. Hey, I can read slug. Seven, make a vocabulary list. Slugs love new words. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuppet, eating her curds and whey. Along came the slug, who gave her a hug and told her to have a nice day. What's a tuppet? A tuppet is a low seat. What's curds and whey? Cottage cheese. No kidding. Eight. Let your slug underline his favorite words in slug slime. Sweet Sammy Slug slides down the town, upstairs and downstairs in his nightgown. To make sure that children are tucked into their bed, a dream of slug fairies dance in their heads. Nine. Read your slug's favorite poems with him as many times as he wants. Read him other books, too. Slug for President, the Pokey Little Slug, Slug and the Snail are friends. The Snail in the Hat, go Slug, go! To where the wild slugs are. Ha ha! Ten. Be patient. Reading isn't learning a day. It can take months, but don't give up. It is worth it in the end. And then, one day, he will read books to you. It was a dark and stormy night. Then he will read books to the beetles and the butterflies and the grasshoppers and the crickets and the bumblebees and the dragonflies. He may start a story hour or even a school. Once upon a slime, they were all, when all were sleeping, a slug came creeping. Books will teach him how to play slug soccer. Books will show slugs in other lands. Books will show him the whole wide world. And all because you taught your slug to read. The end. Okay, so I just wanted to bring us back to this piece so we can make up some connections to the story we just read. So, Borat's untitled piece, but also known as Pegasus and Book. We obviously see a book and we see a Pegasus. Maybe it's jumping over it, maybe it's coming out of the story. In our story, we learned all about slugs learning how to read. So what connections can we make? I think the clear connection is all about books. We saw a lot of books in our story, and we see a book in this print. What other connections can we make? Maybe they both are connected to fairy tales or stories. So Pegasus is in a lot of fairy tales. And the slug story that we just read, a lot of the books were nursery rhymes or other fairy tale-like stories. What else? What other connections can you make? Maybe it has to do with the colors involved. Maybe it has to do with the subject involved. Either way, I think the main thing to take away is that they both revolve around books and stories. So our art project, which will be in a second video on our website, wisconsinart.org, will also follow this theme of stories and books. Also, during this time, please remember that we have other fun activities for families on our website, which is again, wisconsinart.org. I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.